first of all, I want to say good morning to all of you watching the Vineyard through YouTube. And we are in the process, as soon as we get the infrastructure in to kind of transmit our sermons by way of the internet from here in the chapel. Right now we're going to tape these here in the chapel at 11 o'clock Sunday morning. You heard right. 11 o'clock Sunday morning. And this is our service schedule. As you can see, the sign on the front of this notebook here is going to be the sign we put up on the front door. Our services are going to be 11 o'clock on Sunday and 8 p.m. Sunday night. <clears throat> and 8 p.m. Wednesday night. So... This will be our new logo. We're going to uh, change things over from the script, handwritten kind of logo to this one. <coughs> <coughs> so I wanted to show this sign off and there will be two copies, one on the front door, one on the back door, and we will see it. You can already see where we're at on Google if you search James Barkus Ministries, The Vineyard. That is our YouTube channel. And you can see that as well. As you know, um, batteries are a premium right now. So I'm going at it voice to microphone on board the camera this morning. So praying that the Lord keeps the voice on me <clears throat> to be able to continue preaching like this till we get some more batteries and can put the sound system back on out here. But we are going to begin in the word of prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, Jehovah, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the word that you are about to give us and in this broadcast that we are videotaping on a Sunday morning that's kind of cloudy this morning. Father, we just thank you. Father, we also ask that you put your hand of protection over those that are in harm's way with thunderstorms and whatnot taking place today and all throughout the week and pray that your hand of protection, your grace and deliverance is over those that have been impacted through storms earlier in the week. Jehovah, we just thank you for this word that you're about to give through me. And I give myself a willing vessel to you. Heavenly Father, bless those that hear this word, for they need it. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 This morning... This is a different part of Scripture in Luke chapter 6. The first four books of the Bible in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, give the perspective of the ministry of Jesus Christ uh, from the four major apostles that wrote these books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <clears throat> Luke was the physician. If my memory of vacation Bible school and Sunday school serves me well, Luke was the physician, so his perspective on Jesus Christ was different than Matthew, Mark, and John. So, 
So, as they're ministering, and there's a man in the synagogue that needs healing, and Jesus said unto all that were gathered that day, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking around about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand, because this man showed up whose right hand was withered. This hand was withered. He said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. So here's this man, might have been arthritis, might have been something else. But it withered his hand, made it gnarled. Maybe it was an accident in the younger days. But that man came to the synagogue at the appointed time to receive his healing from Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But the Pharisees were looking for something to pin on him under the law in order to do away with him before Christianity could ever be developed. And verse 11 says, And they were filled with madness, and communed one with another that they, what they might do to Jesus. And it came to pass in those days, he went out into a mountain to pray, and continued all night in prayer, to God. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, called Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. And he came down with them and stood in the plain, and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem, and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him, and healed them all. He lifted up his eyes on his disciples, and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is greater in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. <clears throat> but woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Now 
Now, back in Old Testament days, it was an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. As we heard about Jesus telling. And Jesus continues in 28 of Luke chapter 6. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek. Offer also the other. What Jesus was saying is if they smack you on one side of the face, don't lash out in anger, but offer to them the other cheek. Now, this does not condone domestic violence. But rather to illustrate to keep strife out. To keep fighting and infighting and there's a lot of it today to keep that out. Continuing in verse 29, And him that taketh away thy cloak forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee and in him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, in verse 35, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Today, the title of my message is Love One Another. Lend hoping for nothing again. This ministry that I do is a labor of love. And yes, I know there are expenditures. As with any ministry, there's the electric bill, there's the rent, there's a lot of other things that take place with such. But, on the other hand, if I were to make this ministry about making money to pay the bills, then
then I would have already received my reward. Yes, I have given and lost money. I have, we had a sectional recliner in the other corner of this living room. Just, in fact, the back part of it would have shown up over here. And this was the coffee table that we bought along with another couch that quickly got damaged not long after it came home. And The night that we told, this was two weeks after we bought it, the night that we purchased that, that the couch got damaged, the owner of the establishment had come out to the house uninvited. And tried to tell us how to go about it. And at that time, we listened to them, entertained their thoughts, but there was also an uneasiness that the Lord made me pay attention to. They rambled. We kindly excused ourselves, wished them a good night after some more one-sided conversation. And I said, I think we are done here for this night and done with the business relationship. I showed them kindness still, but I also knew that the Lord wanted me to just finish this off and get them on their way, which we did, thankful enough. And there was no hope of return of a return of money or whatever coming to realize that. So we just did what verse 30 said. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. But we also did what verse 35 said, But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful, and to the evil. Verse 36, Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father is also merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. The church is split in so many ways because man is not able to forgive. 
differences of opinion. So forgive the church, Jehovah, for they know not what they do except through you. In Jesus' name. The mission of the Lord for me as I heard in the Spirit is to set the church right. Because right now it is in a disarray. I am not seeking to start a denomination. Nor am I seeking to put the influence of one denomination or another into this ministry. The mission Jehovah, through His Son Jesus Christ, gave me was to preach the Word from Genesis to Revelation. Not only to preach the Word, but to also set the church right according to this word. According to in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The church must be set right. Because right now, preachers standing behind the sacred stand are preaching only part of the Word. In the words of Robin Williams, it was Christianity light. Well, he used a specific religion, but I liken the fact of some churches preaching part of a message that benefits their coffers, that benefits their ego, that benefits their consciousness for saying, I have given the word, when they haven't. If you're going to give the word of God from the sacred sand pastors, you are going to give the word of God in its entirety. From Genesis to Revelation, Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 21 22. Otherwise, how can you call yourself a teacher, a preacher, an apostle, an evangelist? And I'm sorry, I got the numbers backwards. Revelation 22, 21. How can you call yourself a preacher of the Word of God if you don't give the Word of God in its entirety? Joel Osteen His start was in the media part of the ministry his father started. His start was in the control room. But then he was called to the pulpit. Yes, Lakewood Church has grown. But not without the loss of the Word of God. Do I...
hear bits and pieces of the Word of God in Joel Osteen's message? Yes. Certain scriptures like Luke 6 and 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. They only give part of that. Up to the point. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom. But they don't read the rest of that passage. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. That's why I say again, preachers, if you're going to give the word of God, in a setting from the sacred stand, you give the whole world word and not just a part. If a man is going to preach the word of God, it must be in its fullness and not as if you're giving a Betty Crocker recipe. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father is also merciful. So I do not judge Joel Osteen, but I pray Joel Osteen pulls that Bible from his desk Puts it on that pulpit like I put my Bible on the pulpit and gives the word. <coughs> Pardon me. I pray Osteen and Copeland and Crouch and Jake's and the others that stand at the sacred stand give the entire word of Jehovah in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For a man that gives the entire word of Jehovah. Luke chapter 6, verse 48. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently. And immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great.
back to that concordance here and find study because this is where pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Word of God have to go. And it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Verse 17. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So when you study the word of Jehovah from Genesis to Revelation, Study it in its entirety. Study it. Show thyself approved, rightly dividing the word of Jehovah. And not being ashamed. It takes a lot of energy to preach this word. It takes a lot of my vocal cords to preach this word. It takes everything that I am to do what Jehovah has instructed me to do. Because very few stand before you and give the word like I'm giving the word. Very few stand behind the sacred stand, whether they created it from a plastic tote with a prayer shawl over it and their book, their, their Bible is sitting on it, or whether it is a three or four thousand dollar sacred stand purchased to put in a sanctuary. The word of Jehovah is being locked up. And back in the days of old, the Pharisees locked that word up by not teaching it and conspiring against our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
that same conspiracy is still taking place where the complete word of Jehovah is not being given. It's just being piecemealed. A little here, a little there. Don't read a complete scripture. That's what's happening in the church today. But it is the mission of James Barkus Ministries to give you the whole word of the living God, whose name is Jehovah. Exodus 6, 3. And rather than try to go based on my feeble memory, I will give it to you right out of here. Chapter 6, verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. And Jehovah proceeded to tell of how he's heard their cries and heard their lamentations. The word of Jehovah Thank you. The word of Jehovah heals. And it is just like that vision in Revelation, that two-edged sword coming out of the mouth of our Lord and Savior. The two-edged sword. It kills and it heals. So who will you believe today? Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whose hands were nailed to the cross, whose feet were nailed, he was pierced on his side, he bled, was tortured, scourged, and died, so that we may enjoy his company when this New Jerusalem comes in and brings with it a new heaven and a new earth for the old things are passed away. Or are you going to believe the smooth talking preacher on television? The smooth talking preacher on television that just gives a portion of the word mixed with a story. I know who I'm believing. I'm believing what is in this word from Genesis to Revelation and everywhere in between. You can't tell me any different. You can't show me any different. Because the word of Jehovah is in there. The word of Jehovah was nailed on that cross. And the word of Jehovah is what will set us free. Every week, 
I lead people down Romans Road because it was the road I was led on to become a Christian. I'm going to start at verse 21 and go to verse 26. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remissions of sins that are past through the forbearance of Jehovah God. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. The next stop on the highway, Romans Road, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And I'm going to do Romans chapter 5, verses 6, 7, and 8. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet for adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 9, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Romans Road, Romans chapter 10, verses 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. But righteousness, which is a faith, speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above? Or who shall ascend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, <clears throat> that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is, <coughs> for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all 
is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah to the Lamb who was slain. Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Again, if you do want to come by and see a service, bring your own chair and your Bible. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer with you. Those of you that feel like you're, you're at a point in your life that you have no other choice. The choices presented to you are to continue living as you have before and Ending up in hell when Jesus Christ tells you, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I don't know you. That's a paraphrase, but I do recall. And I know the same thing will be said in me. Because when I get before Jesus Christ, and I get before Jehovah, His Father, I don't want to hear the words for anyone who lead my sheep astray. It would be better for you to put a millstone around your neck and cast yourself into the sea. That's why I give the whole word of Jehovah. That is why I give the whole word of Jehovah without reservation. Because the whole word has to be given. Like it or not. That is the mission Jehovah has on my heart. That is the mission that in 2005 I ran from that calling. Because no man is ready for the complete word of Jehovah and his son Jesus Christ and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the discerner of the truth. I wasn't even ready for it. I have been saved 26 years. A quarter of a century. I was a little under 19 years of age when I got saved. I was a boy back then. As we start the 27th year of my salvation and the 17th year of ministry, or 18th year, coming up. It is time. You know, this summer will close out the 17th year. June of 2005 was when I was called deeper into the ministry to preach the word. And when I go further into the ministry, I lose a lot more of myself and gain a lot more of Jehovah. And his son Jesus Christ. But you too gain the word when I preach the whole word, rather than just a bit here, a bit there. I want you.
want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I am lost. I know I can do nothing without you. I have gotten myself in deep and I don't know where I am at. I ask you to be rescued. I ask you to rescue me. I ask you to help me to believe you by showing me the way. Jesus Christ, I stretch my hand out to you that you will pull me out and bring me back as a little lost sheep is brought back to the flock. So too must I. Father, Send the Holy Spirit to me that I may be strengthened and continue to hear the voice of the Great Shepherd and be led to you in that day of resurrection. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I believe and I receive. And I am free. Amen. And amen. And this prayer I do as an obligation that I have over the souls that are saved through this broadcast. Heavenly Father Jehovah, those that prayed that prayer with me, may you fill them with the Holy Ghost and the power that is contained in the Holy Ghost. That it will clean them and purge them of what is not of you. And that what is of you is brought forth and made to manifest. It's in the name of Jesus I pray, Jehovah. Amen. 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 There are ways to help the ministry and those will come up on the screen now. If you'd like to give a tithe or offering to this ministry, paypal.me forward slash JVM Vineyard. Once again, that's paypal.me forward slash JVM Vineyard. Or you can send check or money order to P.O. Box 762, Manchester, Georgia 31816 or 302 West 3rd Street, Manchester, Georgia 31816. Both of those address it to James Barkas Ministries. If you'd like to give a prayer request or testimony by way of email, Send it to us, jbmprayeratlive.com. Be sure in the subject line to write prayer request or testimony. I'm going to check my settings on YouTube as far as being able to leave prayer requests through there as well. I know that if the chat is still enabled, what have you, you can leave your prayer request there and the whole world of believers will pray with you, for you, and intercede on your behalf. If you are looking to book me or my wife for a speaking engagement, jbmworldhq at live.com. jbmworldhq at live.com. Or you can send the invitation to the street address, 302 West 3rd Street, Manchester, Georgia, 31816. Or P.O. Box 762, Manchester, Georgia, 31816. We've already renewed the P.O. Box for another year. On behalf of all of us at James Farkas Ministries, again, we'll let you know that if you do want to come to 302 West 3rd Street and either watch a service that will be videotaped and put up same day on YouTube, Sunday morning, 11 a.m., Sunday evening, 8 p.m., and Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Bible study. Note these times. If you do come, bring your own chair. We got a little bit of room in the sanctuary here. Bring your own chair or sit on the day bed or an extra chair that we got here in the living room. You have a little one, sit them there in the high chair. We can loan the high chair out while you're here. If you have a little one that you need to take care of, 
surfaces stay clean on it. And we do our best to keep this sanctuary looking decent and presentable. In fact, I just put LED lighting in the fixture up overhead. So it's a little bit brighter than what it has been in recent years in here. And know that we do our best to open the eyes and ears of the Word of Jehovah to you watching by way of YouTube. This will be put up the same day. In fact, I'll be working on it shortly after I finish this broadcast. I pray that you're saved and set free from the bondage of sin. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Have a good day, everyone. If you would like to learn more about our ministry, the Vineyard Broadcast, or the other ministry programs of James Barkus Ministries, visit us at jamesbarkusministries.wordpress.com. Visit us today. We're also back on Facebook.